Hello and welcome. This is the WWW, the weekly wellness Wednesday. I always want to say world, worldwide wrestling. We won't be wrestling around tonight, but we will, we will be wrestling with some, uh, with some vital topics and uh, concerns in our, on our planet and our country and our right in our backyard and our home. So I'm Robert Arthur here in beautiful Granbury, Texas. And my co-host is Mr. Jim Rhodes. In St. George, Utah. Robert yes, Arthur, you're it's in nice and warm. Granbury, Texas. My we wanna, there we go. We <laughs> want to welcome you guys. And the, the gentleman, well, first of all, a little promo. You know, we do this every week and we brought some, just for lack of a better, word, a better way of saying it, just some very passionate, um, heart centered individuals onto this interview series. And we invite you to go back into our Facebook community, which is Your Next Level Starts Here. And you can type in www and almost a gathering, a, a growing library of topics and journeys and personality styles that you could tap into. Any comments, Jim, on the interviews we've done the last few months? Oh, golly. There, there Again, is such a muted, good... My friend. Oh, I am. I am so sorry. Can you hear me now? There Again, is such a muted, good... My friend. There you are. Oh, I am, sorry about that. I am that. so sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. I, I think some of the, well, the, the fun thing about this call, it is real, unrehearsed, pure raw. And without being rehearsed, there's no given answer. And every person's health journey, in my opinion, to even discover what they've been using and the change up in their lives is a big smile on their face. And almost without exception, that is the truth at the end of whatever they've experienced. And, and it all comes down to the, the proof of this pudding is putting it in your mouth and letting it do what it does best, which is deliver the nutrition our body needs to do its best. Yeah, very much so. And, and you know, there's our guest tonight, he's seen that firsthand. You know, he went from the traditional, entering the traditional med uh, medicinal practice. And uh, he had some little catalyst that happened and we'll hear more about his journey. And he began to uh, integrate the traditional and alternative and holistic approach into his practice over the three plus decades. So uh, let's, let's introduce our guest, Jim. Dr. Dennis Harper, who hails from the great state of Utah also. <laughs> and he's got a background. <clears throat> I don't know how many years you've actually practiced medicine, doctor. Since 1986. Okay, a few years. <laughs> and, and those things in your own practice brought you into a unique position. You filled several positions in the state, even on a, on a very important board. What was that board? I was on the licensing board for four years, and then the last year I was the chairman of the licensing board. Okay, so that that then you reviewed each doctor who wanted to practice in the state, basically went through your uh, criteria. Each osteopathic position, yes. Awesome, awesome. Also, I know you're famous for another reason, and that is because you were able to help get a legislation passed that really blessed all of us so that we have supplements still available to us. And I think you worked very closely with uh, Senator Orrin Hatch at the time. Can you give just a little bit of background what that would mean to the average person who uses, say, a vitamin C to help their immune system be a little stronger? Well, yes, uh, I'm trying to remember the dates because you asked me about those earlier. And quite frankly, I can't remember the exact dates, but I think it was around 1991 where the FDA came out with rules and pro uh, proposed rules and regulations for the control of supplements. And at that time, uh, they decided that if somebody hadn't opposed these rules, uh, then they would have become law within six months. Uh, in those rules, they talked about that no supplement could be giving any type of a health claim unless the FDA had already approved it. Now, at that time, they hadn't even approved calcium. So they hadn't approved any supplements at all. 
and uh, and and it didn't just stay with supplements; it went with foods as well. So, if the FDA didn't say there was a legitimate claim behind it, then you couldn't say it, even if it was vitamin C to try to help your cold or chicken noodle soup for the flu or whatever, because you could have been fined a million dollars for saying that, whether you're a doctor or just a neighbor talking over the back fence to your neighbor. And whoever turned you in would have collected 25% of whatever they collected. Wow. You could get rich by going around asking for people's uh, ideas of how to get better and, and get them all sued and become wealthy. No friends, no friends left, however. That's right. Well, <laughs> That's crazy. And so with the help of uh, Senator Hatch, then you were actually able to block that kind of law coming into uh, into practice yes. he he opposed it he said uh now i'll be happy i was there with uh, ray howard who has since passed away uh, along with another physician who doesn't want his name mentioned but he said i will go ahead and and propose that we do not obey the fda's commandments that they had at that time wow. uh, but you have to understand you're going to be fighting against the most powerful lobby in washington which of course was the drug industry so uh, and it took a long time. I think it took anywhere from two to three years to finally get it through to where it was finally passed. But what it did is it, it, it essentially protected supplements. They considered them to be generally recognized as safe. And so consequently, you could then, uh, you still couldn't make claims, but you could certainly still tell people about it and use them regularly. Otherwise, they, they would have been taken off the market. Wow. Wow. And so that you want to call it battle, whatever, over over who controls that. I'm, I'm, I'm as you said, you know, there's obviously I'm sure several layers of that story behind it. But in essence, it was somebody trying to assume control of that of this open market. That's correct. Well, they had lecture or not lectures, but they had people showing up from the FDA in Congress saying, well, we don't care what people take as long as they don't. Uh, uh, talk about amino acids or things like that. Well, it's like <laughs> amino acids are the basic building block of your body, crying out loud. How could you not talk about amino acids if you're talking about a person's body? So uh, it, it, there was a clear division there. They wanted to create a major problem to where people couldn't use supplements because supplements, people are continuing to increase their use of supplements at that time, and they wanted to stop that. Well, they, fortunately, that didn't go through now. I, I'm very grateful to Senator Hatch for that. Wow. Yeah, we are too. Yeah, we are too. And thank you for your proactive role in that at that time and then through the years hence. So thank you, Dr. Harper. Mm -hmm. And as, as Jim, as you teed us up earlier, Dr. Harper, you've been again in practice. I think you mentioned in one of our last calls, as Jim said, 35 plus years. So thank you. Um, so obviously, you became involved with that particular legislature, you were already involved and aware of and passionate about al alternative supplementation, et cetera. I know in a previous conversation with you, you mentioned there was a catalyst. There was like this, uh, you called it a crazy patient, I think in your, in your <laughs> own words. And that kind of woke you up and <sighs> you, you began to become a little more proactive. Yes. Do you want me to tell that story? I think it'd be a fun story because, okay. because I, again, if you're like me, Jim, I think you'd agree. So many medical doctors, I, a lot of people that I meet say, well, why would a medical doctor with his whole, his whole journey ahead of him and kind of conditioned to do A, branch off into B and C, even under scrutiny and you caught it kickback in one of our other calls. So yes, please. Well, I had a patient that was clinically depressed. I mean, we had tried everything on her. I'd send her to psychologists, psychiatrists. We tried the, the medications we had available to us at the time. Nothing seemed to be working for her. In the meantime, I had a doctor in Utah that sent me three books that he made me promise to read. And so when I got them, one was back to health through yeast control. Uh, the other one was the bitter tooth about artificial sweeteners. And the third one was how to lower your fat thermostat. These were all by Dr. Remington. And when I saw the books, I thought, oh, geez, this guy's a kook. But I told him I'd read his dang books, so I had to read his books. So after I read the uh, Back to Health Through Yeast Control, 
my patient came in and she had a very bizarre affect. She would come in and she'd go, hi, Dr. Harper, how are you? And I'd say, oh, fine, how are you doing? She said, oh, I'm so depressed. And I thought, well, tell your face, something is dis disconnected here. And she came in and she said, I think I know what's wrong with me. And I thought, really? <laughs> okay, well, well, tell me what you think is wrong with you. And she said, I think I have a systemic yeast problem. And I thought, well, I just read this book. I didn't never traded a patient or anything. I thought, well, if she wants to go down this road, I'll be happy to do this with her. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. And so I would, I just barely understood a little concept of it. And I put her on the nice stat and gave her the diet, told her what not to eat. Well, in six weeks, she was perfectly normal. And I thought, whoa, what just happened here? And then I thought, no, 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 no. She was crazy. This was her choice. This is what she wanted to do. So it, uh, it, it but at least I was open enough to, uh, to, to decide to use this on other patients. And, and so I did, I, all of a sudden I started using it on some of my other problem patients. And guess what? I found out that they were starting to improve as well. And then I started using it in the emergency room down at the, at the hospital where I was working on weekends at the emergency room. And pretty soon I had all kinds of other physicians sending me patients to do this weird yeast-free diet. And I thought, what is going on here? This is not right. But what, and then I had a really prominent physician in the Springfield hospital that told me, he said, Dennis, don't go down this road. I've seen too many physicians go down this road and they never come back. And I thought, ah, oh, geez, what am I going to do here? So I thought, well, I either have to go with what I was trained in medical school to do or go with what I'm seeing is working. And so I, it took me, slowly I changed. It took me, well, at least about three years to completely change over to just following what I saw worked as opposed to what I taught was working. So that's when I really went into complementary medicine on a full-time basis. Wow. Yeah, so you you chose to follow the path of, of, of higher service. Uh, what was, I'm curious. Well, <laughs> it wasn't years. considered a higher service at the time. In right. fact, in the, in the state of Utah, when I moved back here, it was actually considered to be illegal. Right. And it took me three additional years to change the legislature here and the rules that governed that to where, no, you could do these things as long as you let the patients know up at front that, yeah, this is not considered standard of care. But prior to that, they would take physicians licenses if they started using supplements or something, some type of complementary medicine. So uh, I, it took me three years to really get that run through. And eventually uh, we got that changed. Well, to be raw, do you consider yourself more of a maverick or rebel? Why did you, why did never, you continue to follow that path? I have never been a rebel. I've always been pretty dang quiet. I just kind of sit back in corners and let things life go around me. Well, but, I would beg, I would beg to differ, Doctor Harper. Well, since that time, though, I realized you're either going to do what I mean. I spent a quarter of a million dollars essentially on medical school, and all of a sudden, I'm having to head a different direction. Yeah. And my wife is also telling me, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, uh, I'm just doing what I feel and see is right, as opposed to what I was trained to do. Now, wow. do I still use my medical training? Of course I did. But I no longer used medications and things like that first. I used that last. I would always use uh, complementary medicines, dietary changes, supplements, whatever to uh, start. And then if I couldn't get where I needed to go with that patient with those things, then I would rely on uh, traditional medicine. Awesome. That is an amazing journey. <clears throat> and that brings you into the nutritional arena when another patient, I understand, came over and said, hey, you need to try these natural things. <laughs> I've heard they really work well. <laughs> what was your response to your own brother? Yeah, I was just going to say that wasn't a patient. That was my brother. <laughs> and I said, Terry, I just don't believe what you're telling me that this will work. And uh, 
he said, oh, no, everybody's getting really good, re really good results. And I said, well, have you tried it? And he said, no. I thought, well, <laughs> great. That's really wonderful. Uh, uh, and so I, I realized I can continue to talk to him for another 40, 45 minutes, or I could just buy the product and get him out of my office so I could go back to work. And so that's what I did. And I, 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 I just didn't do this with my brother. I did this with a lot of people. As a matter of fact, they would bring products into my office and I'd look at them and I'd say, well, let me go ahead and buy that. And then I would put it up on a shelf because then the next person that came in and said, Hey, by the way, this is the price. Oh yeah. I've got that on my shelf. And immediately stopped all that discussion, but he eventually made me try it a month later. And I did try it and found out the son of a gun good nutrition like that really did make some amazing changes. And uh, I had a hard time wrapping my head around it, but I at least once again, followed through with what I was seeing worked as opposed to my little training up here. So, so I'm curious about that though. So at, when he approached you, so you're saying that you were bought, you were, balking against a, a package nutritional system per se because you had already been recommending more of a healthy eating is that what is that what the challenge was versus well, no i just i didn't believe his claims ah, okay. okay okay and so i'd already switched over to telling people to eat more healthy change their diets things like that and i have was selling supplements out of my office on a pretty regular basis and so when he brought this package in and made such amazing claims, I thought, ah, this is not, this is bogus. Uh, and that's the way a lot of the products that would come in. People would tell me that it cured cancer, did all these other things. And so I'd just buy the product and put it on the shelf so I could get back working with my real patients. Okay. I got you. So it was, it was more claims related versus you already were aware of supplementation was right. helpful and worked. So, okay, now I'm more clear. And that was a similar system to kind of, to kind of bring us up to date, that was a similar system at that time. And that's how we met you, Dr. Harper. You, Jim, and I were with that particular program and right. we had a beautiful journey. And just to kind of fast forward the clock a little bit in the storyline here. Um, now, so where should we start at the, the next wow. phase of the story, guys? Let, let's talk a little bit about that. That previous company was really cutting edge at the time. It was... Yeah it did some really amazing things with their products. Uh, since that time, I realized that there are, are there, there's three different types of whey that we can use. Okay. You can use just plain unconcentrated whey. does not, it's still good for your body, but just doesn't have the punch that concentrated whey has uh, and concentrated whey is anywhere. And you have to look at the concentration again, because you can get anything from 25% concentrate to 85% concentrate. So there's a lot of differences in between there. And that was much better than just regular whey. Well, then with the Zalevo, I found out that they were using an isolate, which is a 95% concentration. And not only did I find out about that, but I also found out that the nutritional value or the bioavailability value is what I should talk about. Like the bioavailability value of chicken is considered to be around 70 to 75. All right. That's the protein that's in chicken. The concentrate is around 105. And they're assuming an 85% concentration with that. The isolate, on the other hand, is 150 plus on the bioavailability scale. So you can see, whoa, 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 just a minute we're seeing almost a 50% increase jump from the concentrate to 85%. We're not talking about the lower levels. We're talking about the 85% con concentration to the isolate. And the isolate, the big problem with the isolate is in the past is that we've always had isolates that have denatured all the proteins, okay? Now, with one company, this company does not denature the proteins. They have extremely secret process in which they do not denature these proteins. So now you're getting all the benefits of those proteins as well as getting that additional bioavailability factor of 150 plus. Wow. I don't know if what I just said, if you understood what I just said. It well, means it's a whole lot better. Yeah, it and, means a whole lot better. That's right. Yeah. And also in layman's terms, what I'm hearing you is that your body can actually uptake what's actually in that supplement versus so much of it just going through and your body just can't get, get it into the cells. 
Mm-hmm. Well, yes, it's much more available to your body. In fact, uh, the, the isolate the Zalevo has is almost 100% absorbed. Okay. Wow. So that's pretty incredible right there. Now, the other thing you have to look at is because there's been a lot of companies that have used concentrate over the years. And many of those companies have gotten into trouble because their, their way was co- uh, contaminated with heavy metals. Wow. Well, we do not want heavy metals going into anybody's body because heavy metals cause oxidation and create a shorter lifespan. So that's not a good idea. So uh, with the isolate, the nice thing about Zalevo is they're double checking. They're, they're doing a certificate of analysis when they that sent by the company, then they do another certificate of analysis to make sure that what they ordered is what they got, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's all, that's very, very important because most companies won't do that. They won't do a double certificate of analysis. They'll just accept the single certificate. So yeah, it's nice to see that we can definitely state that what we're selling people is what they think they're getting. Wow, and your body can actually absorb that, but what's yes. on the label. And Without the heavy metals. Well, wow, that's a big one. Any comments? Cause I'm a big fan. I do a hybrid mm-hmm. shake here and there and so forth on the plant base. I know. We've been able to bring in an array, a nice little array of, of plant proteins that simulate that impact of the isolate. Any, any comments around that? Well, there's quite a few. I mean, Zalevo did an excellent job with their plant-based formulas. I mean, I had a whole closet full of shakes that I was trying for my wife because she couldn't tolerate a lot of the shakes. And so I was looking for uh, just a, a, a vegan shake. And I was ordering all kinds of shakes from all kinds of different companies. And let me just tell you, most of them were pretty dang disgusting, okay? <laughs> uh, she wouldn't even touch any of them, quite frankly. I had to drink them all. And, and so, and, and I can tell you from firsthand experience, most of them were disgusting. A few of them had a fairly good flavor. When I got Zalevo Shake, uh, their plant-based formula, it was like, wahoo for me, because that is a really good flavored shake, for, especially if you're going to be a vegan. I mean, my goodness gracious, you don't get any better than that, okay? And then also, it's got the amino acid profile. It's, it's most uh, closely resembling way as we could possibly make it, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, it comes from plant sources, so uh, it it has a different texture, but uh, it still has a lot of the isoleucine in there. Okay, and this is really important for muscle building because uh, uh, leucine and isoleucine help build muscles in our body. They stimulate muscle building, but you have to have at least 2.3 grams to stimulate, to cross that threshold. Now, the plant-based formula has 2.6 grams, and the whey-based formula, oh, I'm trying to remember what the whey-based formula has. I think it has 4.3 or 4.8 grams of leucine and isoleucine so it's like wow it it definitely achieves those boundaries both shakes do to help increase that muscle building now the interesting thing about this is you would think well great i get it once one time a day i'm I'm building muscle all day long no it only builds muscle for about two and a half to three hours and then it shuts off and has to have a rest so even if you add another shake before that time it's not going to increase your muscle building at all so you have to have that rest in between so it's, it, that's important to separate those shakes at least by two and a half to three hours hmm. you mean a kind of a reset or what do you mean by a rest between your body uptake your body requires a rest before it will stimulate that muscle building synthesis again hmm. so it's kind of like it's said okay i've done my part now i'm going to take a little nap okay Okay. And then after that nap's over, then you can hit it again with the, with the leucine and then the isoleucine, and it will re-stimulate that muscle building process again. Huh. That's fascinating. Because I, I, admittedly, I, I'm very lean. Well, all three of us are, are, are very lean. So for, with me, and I, I switched to the plant, to be honest, uh, solely the last two months. And my goodness, and I do a three scoop shake, which if you're listening, a typical shake is two scoops, 30 grams. And so it's called ultra 30. I do a 45 gram shake. And my goodness, I'm working out less than I was, Dr. Harper and Jim, and I have more muscle definition than before. Oh. And I- well, You're I, increasing I, that protein. So you're automatically increasing that leucine and isoleucine as well. So, and then you're getting all the building blocks that are associated with your body that, that needs it as well. So people that are bodybuilding generally require more than 30 grams per serving. 
Okay. And you, there's formulas that you can get off of the internet. I don't remember what the formula is, but you can get them off the internet where you can actually figure out by dividing your weight and turning it into kilograms. You divide it by 2.2, it turns it into kilograms. You multiply your kilograms times your level of activity, and that gives you your total amount of protein. Now, if you're weightlifting, you need to be at 45 grams per serving. Yeah. And we have those little formulations. If you don't have those, reach out. If you're listening to this call, reach out to invite you to this and we'll find those guides and we have little <laughs> graphs for you. We can help you get clarity around that. So Dr. Harper, you yourself were, um, you connected to our director of product development, who's, a, she's just this brilliant lady. We all love yes. her. Her name is Kirsty, Kirsty Cody. And, um, and you did do a general you did do a little evaluation that you were already very fit. You were already taking supplements for years. And so you did notice though, even with all that being said, you said, you said you shifted a bit with your body composition. Yes. The, the, I lost an addition. I was pretty close to my ideal body weight, but I still lost a little over seven pounds when I did the uh, two days of autophagy, five days of shakes and two days of autophagy again. And uh, I felt pretty dang good. I, I, I've got to admit, uh, the, the, the real key here is remember, the weight is not the issue. It's the composition of your body. Because I've seen people that were 110, 115 pounds that were literally would be considered obese because of their fat content, okay? And I've seen 200 pound people that would not even begin to be considered obese because of their muscle content. So it's not the weight. It's the actual composition of the body itself. And that's what's really important. And I make a comment on that. <clears throat> Probably the biggest surprise, and I recommend to every person that I help who is looking at losing weight to purchase one of these smart scales, which will measure your body mass index, your fat mass versus your lean body and muscle mass, and get a baseline before they even start putting the product in their body and within the week i will get a phone call two weeks sometimes my goodness my weight is going down but my muscle mass is going up and science says you can't be gaining while you're losing uh, what is this formula that makes that happen and and you hit right on it it is that super protein and the fact that that much gets in because of the delivery system of enzymes it's got with it and all of the factors that go with it too, to be a full spectrum meal. I, uh, I actually spoke with a, a physician, Dr. Michael Colgan. He called me one time and he said, uh, tell me about your experience with this. And I told him that since I was a physician, I'm just sitting all day long and I didn't do anything to change what I was consuming. And I said, and I increased my muscle mass by three pounds. He said, that's impossible. I said, I'm not telling you that it's impossible. I'm just telling you, that's what happened. Right. Okay. And until you do it yourself and find out what's going on, you won't know. And he was shocked. He was literally shocked when he saw that. And the reason is because we've, we, well, I don't know exactly how deep you want to go into this, but it appears that it may also be changing some other substances in your body. I mean, uh, it's possible that they're, as they're going up, it's also increasing muscle building capacity, even though you're sitting, okay? Because that's what I was doing. I wasn't exercising. I was sitting all day long talking to patients. And yet my muscle mass went up. My uh, lean body mass went down. My I'm not lean body mass. My lean body mass went up. My total body water went down and my total fat went down dramatically as opposed to um, you know, losing just muscle, which is frequently what happens takes place when you do go on diets. Yeah, we've, we've seen so much of that. Um, guys, with your permission, let's, let's pause and see if there's any questions in the chat. And if you're watching live on the live stream, there is a 30 second delay. So if you put a question in right now, well, I won't see it until 30 seconds from now, but there is one that came in from, uh, from Jill. Jill just simply said, when, I know it's a, it's a pretty broad question, but when's the best time to take a shake. I know it depends on all kinds of factors, but um, what's the ideal time? Is there, is there an ideal time of day? Well, I would certainly take it the first thing in the morning, okay, just to help with the glucose metabolism and, and getting the muscle mass started again. Uh, but you have to remember everybody's body is uniquely their own, okay? This is really important. 
everybody's going to have their own basic experience whenever they start using these products. And so for me to tell somebody that, oh, well, they may find out that taking it just before bedtime works best for them. I'm not going to tell them that's wrong because right. they have to start listening to their own body and realizing when they're, when they're adding things to their body, they have to be the one that's in control, not me as a physician. Okay, that's really important. They can use me as a reference source. They can use you as a reference source. They can use all kinds of people as reference sources, but they still have to be the one that makes the decision. But yeah, I, I like mine in the morning and then at night. Uh, if you're looking for uh, reducing weight, taking one at night is really important because you're only looking at 200 plus calories. And that way you're not packing your stomach full of carbs and, and, and calories at night when you're not going to be using. No, it's great points. And I just came back from a Costa Rica mission incentive trip with Zaleva. We were eating a little more carbs than normal and, and so forth. And uh, today is a wonderful example, Dr. Harper and Jim. You know, I had a shake this morning. I was planning to have dinner tonight, but instead I loaded up my, my shake and I put some additional peanut butter and I put some even some little um, uh, spinach in there. I, I did. I just did it upright and down the hatch. And man, yeah, it's it's. But but I think I love how you answered. Uh, listen to your body. Everybody's body is different. Oh and, man, uh, you want to know how different it is? I've told people this before, and it's such an amazing thing. You have a hundred million base pairs in your body in your DNA. At every hundred base pairs, there's a change in the amino acids that make you unique. So when you're looking at that, the permutations are four times four, 10 million times. So that's four times, four times, four times, four times, four, 10 million times. Yeah. That number is so large that I had a math guy come back and he said, I'm not really sure. He was a math major. He said, I don't really know that I can tell you for sure, but it seems to be with six zeros per inch, it's a number that's 32 miles long. So that means you are never, ever going to be recreated. You have your own biochemistry set. You have to listen to it. Wow. Wow. I, that's a new one for you. Jim is always those listening. I've got to memorize that one. Please send it yeah. to me. <laughs> you know this about Jim has these beautiful analogies and that's a new one. 32 miles long is where it's tied to your base pairs. Whoa. Well, that's, that's beautiful. A, it tells us that this body is that unique and we're one of a kind. That's right. And listening to ourselves who knows itself better than anybody else, getting in tune with that would make great sense because what, what I've been teaching my whole life is we are what we eat, what we drink, what we breathe, what we put on our skin or soak ourselves in, and they're all affected by what we think. So if we can control those and put high nutrient dense food in that has all those building blocks of the essential amino acids, the essential fatty acids, that's the healthy fats and the healthy proteins, the essential vitamins and the essential minerals. And the minerals often are the ones that's missing, but it's not missing in these products. No, Suddenly not. our body can respond to all of that and we can be a lean, mean walking machine. <laughs> that's right. Some I people may do much better on the plant-based than on the whey-based, and some people do much better on the whey-based than the plant-based. So you just have to see what your body says. Good, good points, guys. Uh, one of the questions that came in uh, is, about, is around the whole thing about, you know, how you can actually now supplement with a, uh, exogenous, you know, outside the body ketones versus burning our own ketones. And so the question is, What's the difference in health regarding having your stimulating your body and your own ketones versus you know supplementing? I think that was the question from uh, Raina. Raina, let us know that's not the question. Do you understand the question, Dr. Harper? Yes, I do. What you're saying is, well, can we artificially create a state of ketosis in our body by taking exogenous ketones? Is that what you're saying? I believe so. Raina, please. Uh, yes. Confirm. Yes, you can get supplements that are just ketones, and supposedly that helps us start to burn our own. The only problem with that is once again, you're still having a lot of sugar in your body. Okay. So if you're not getting rid of the sugar, you're not actually starting your own ketotic process. So if you're using exogenous ketones, but when you get rid of the exogenous ketones, what's your body going to do? Go right back to the sugar. It's going to go right back to burning sugar. So uh, I like the idea of making your body become less lazy. Okay. 
with all the carbs and simple carbs and stuff that we're consuming every day, our bodies literally become lazy and don't want to get into that ketotic state. And so I think it's really a good idea to make sure your body does get into that ketotic state. Uh, but I don't have enough information in regards to exogenous ketones to actually tell you. Let, let, let me just give you an analysis. If you're going to take ketones for your fuel, it doesn't need yours. <laughs> if you <laughs> want right. to burn fat, which is yours, which causes turns ketones. into the ketones in your liver, then that's what you want to do is reduce your own fat and get your body, as you said, retrained into utilizing that those ketones as its fuel yeah. and use it as often and as easy as it does the glucose. And suddenly you become a fat burning machine that gets you down to the ideal weight. And also the energy of a ketone is way higher. It is premium uh, jet fuel compared to diesel fuel of right. glucose. Yep. Wow. Great comments. Raina gave us a thumbs up and a smiley face. So uh, thanks, Raina. <laughs> yeah, thank you both for answering that very succinctly. So with your permission, just one second, I do want to acknowledge the people that are on this live. So we have Debbie Cartwright, her and Doneth are awesome. We have Raina who asks the questions. We have uh, Barb, Barb, you're the bomb, love you. Diane Johns, we have Dennis here, Jill obviously ask, asking questions. Thank you all for being here. Anna, Katrina, thank you guys. So I don't see any more questions coming in. So toward the end of this little chat tonight, I, I'd love to ask you a question as well in closing. What do you see the impact that we've, we've already made so far with, with Zalevo versus what we're in the process of making in the wellness arena? I know it's a broad question, but what's different about how we're moving into this arena? Well, you remember earlier in the conversation, I talked about cutting edge. Zalevo is now the cutting edge company, okay? Because of the products that they're producing, because of the quality that they're producing, because of that supremely beneficial isolate in the way and also with their plant-based formulas that are well as you know they taste really good and yet they're really good for you they're not just filled with sugars i mean for crying out loud because well we can look at protein shakes if you go out and buy protein shakes off the grocery store what are they what are they composed of yeah so a whole wad load of sugar. That's why old people like these things. It's like, oh, I'm just going to go out and open myself a can of this. I'm just drink that thing down because it tastes really good. Well, yeah, but you got to look at just like your body's composition is important. So are those shakes compositions are important. You mentioned the trace minerals. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. If we had good, clean, nutritionally dense foods, if we had good, clean water, if we had good, clean air, my profession would be in serious trouble. Okay. Yep. Good point. Yeah. Yes. So you, you went through all the different, those beautiful points uh, of why we, we are leading and we are world-class and cutting edge as a company and we continue to lead and stay on that cutting edge. So thank you both. Uh, what's, what's a, what's a call to action for those listening on this live or the recording that you would like to leave with your audience? Me first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, the only thing I can tell you is we've told you what are good foods to be taking. We've told you how your body will respond to these things. Probably. Once again, you have to listen to your own body, but I can guarantee you that what you, what you buy is what you're going to be getting because of the quality control that exists in Zalevo. And that's ever so important. Wow. Yeah. I would echo body. that and add <clears throat> the science that has increased with these cutting edge formulations that allow not only the burning of ketones, your own fat, but to get into that autophagy of the reboot and literally activate our own fountain of youth to start replacing old, broken, or even harmful cells with brand new ones because the protein shake has all the building blocks for all the brand new ones. It is a, a, it's a system that literally can change our future. 
I just wish everybody in the country was on it, quite frankly, because you'd see so much less disease. You'd see so much less to have nutritionally dense products in your body. I can't, I, well, ask any farmer what happens when you feed your animals crappy food. Okay, they're going to have crappy animals. For some reason, we haven't figured this out yet, that if we're feeding people crappy food, they're going to be having problems. Well, get away from eating crappy food. Get back to good, nutritionally dense foods. Yes. Well and we're on the edge of that, the most wholesome version of that. So thank you both. And uh, your passion comes through always loud and clear, Dr. Harper. Thank you for, we're, we're so grateful you're part of this community. For those listening, Dr. Harper, along with Dr. Messina, they're the uh, initial founding, uh, well, I would say initial key members of our Zalabel Labs team that Kirsty is directing. So we're very grateful for you, for you both. Uh, this call will be posted here and recorded, and we invite you to share this with those you love and care about. So with that being said, uh, just love and light to you both. We always do a one, two, three, and uh, force for good. I know it seems carny, but it, I, I, Jim and I love it, Dr. Harper. So uh, one, two, three. Force for, for good. good. Absolutely. Thank love you, you Dr. Dr. Harper. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Robert, as always, welcome home. I missed you. I missed you, <laughs> too. Good to be here. Thanks, Bye -bye. Dr. Harper. Take care. Bye-bye.